Hello, my name is Agnieszka Lutkowska Rzut, I'm a PhD student at Lancaster University, and today I will be talking about the work of my colleagues at Princeton and the University of Chicago and I have worked on. As the title suggests, our goal was to understand how and why people use virtual private networks. Today I will give you a brief introduction, including the motivation behind our work, the methodology we use to answer our research questions, our findings, and what we have learned from them, and we will end up traditionally on conclusions. So let's start with the introduction. So just to make sure we're on the same page, um, in theory, virtual private networks create a secure encrypted connection or a tunnel, as you can see, to a server from which user can access destinations on the internet. So basically it seems that the user connects to the internet from the VPN server rather than um, user's internet service provider. And there are different kinds of VPNs, which generally can be divided into two groups. Institutional, which was actually the first intention for VPN usage. These VPNs are used in certain institutions, organizations, corporations, or universities. They enable users to access destinations on private networks, like uh, private enterprise or campus networks. So for example, I use Global Protect when working from home or traveling, and I cannot be at the office. On the other hand, commercial VPNs are not used for any particular institution. Uh, those usually, commercial VPNs, especially paid ones, have different servers in different locations for users to choose from. So, for example, they can access the content that they are interested in. And some of the most popular VPNs among our participants were Hotspot Shield and NordVPN. Um, and actually, in many cases, commercial VPNs advertise themselves as privacy tools. However, recent studies show that VPNs can leak traffic and be susceptible to attacks, so actually their ability to provide anonymity might be limited. But do VPN users know about these risks? So this led us uh, to create three research questions. Why do people use VPNs? Are people aware of the security and privacy risks of VPNs? And uh, how do people choose which VPNs to use? So this takes us to the methodology that we used. We conducted a two-part study of 729 US users in total. In one part of the study, we interviewed 32 student VPN users uh, from one university in the US. 12 of them were from the US and 20 participants were international students. We also conducted a survey of 349 students from the same university um, as the interviewees and a survey of 348 VPN users from a general population on Prolific. As you can see here, most students were from the US and some were from other countries. And almost all of the general population respondents were Americans. So let's start with a quick summary of our semi-structured interviews. We first designed an interview guide which included questions about participants' general privacy and security awareness about VPNs. Um, we asked participants who they believed uh, could collect data about them online to describe how a VPN works, how they learned about VPNs and what their first experience using a VPN was. Um, and we also asked how they chose and used a particular VPN and also about likes, dislikes and improvements concerning um, their current VPNs. We used Dedus for coding, and this is a summary of nine main codes that we report on in our paper, which also had 31 child codes reflecting the data's main themes. And coming back to surveys, based on interview data and analysis, we designed a larger scale study. So we wanted to determine which teams that I showed you um, from the interviews held with a larger sample of users um, with differing technological knowledge, background, and also access to VPNs. And as I mentioned before, first we run our study with the population of students from the same university as the interview participants, and also then um, the general population on Prolifec. And to analyze our data, we used Qualtrics and R, and um, we also coded open-ended questions similarly to interviews. And now I will talk about our findings. Um, I will actually talk about how our participants used VPNs, uh, what they believed VPNs are, and how they selected VPNs. So let's start with VPN usage category. So we learned that the general population uses VPNs more for security and privacy and tends to use VPNs continually. Students also valued these goals, but they actually tended to use VPNs to circumvent access controls. 
So let's look at the numbers now. Uh, if you look at the table on the left, we can see that most students' respondents use the VPN offered by the university and nearly half also used free commercial VPNs. And they reported using VPNs to access institutional content and bypassing censorship. Most general population VPN respondents used commercial VPNs, um, mostly free ones. Paid commercial uh, and institutional VPNs were less popular. And they used VPNs for privacy and security. Interestingly, uh, as shown in the table here, both groups felt safest using institutional VPNs and not commercial VPNs. Um, and there is a difference between these two groups in how often they use VPNs. So students use VPNs sometimes or rarely, while most general population respondents reported using VPNs sometimes and most of the time. And now I'll talk about mental models of VPNs. Most participants believed VPNs collect data about them as a default consequence of using these tools um, and primarily for targeted advertising. Um, and also uh, we found that um, our participants had quite pragmatic approach towards VPN. So they knew what they are for, but not necessarily what they do. We actually asked participants to tell us what the VPN is in their own words. So here are coded responses from our survey suggested that when thinking about VPNs, participants um, focused, as I mentioned before, on the purpose of the VPN, such as location spoofing or providing extra security and privacy over the internet. And we've seen similar pragmatic approach in our interview respondents. So for example, participants 25 said, it's like, um, I need to see this YouTube video, but they don't let me see it in Brazil, so I'm just going to do it in Belgium. I think that that's what VPNs are to me. So even though general population thought about VPNs as private secure connection, they still believed that VPNs collect the data about them. And students shared that sentiment. So one of our interviewees, participant 11, said, if you're using VPNs for a bit more nefarious means, I think some of them do keep logs and they're able to give them over to police and the governments and things like that. And then other ones are a bit more simple, like tracking users' web habits to sell to advertisers. And when it comes to subjective feelings of our participants to general, uh, the general population survey respondents believed that VPN guarantee many things, not only access to content, but also privacy, safety from tracking and anonymity. While student respondents generally did not feel that VPNs provided total anonymity, but they definitely guaranteed access to content. So let's look at how participants selected VPNs. All participants chose ba VPNs based on cost, security, and speed. And they learned about VPNs around high school and college. So here are the numbers. Um, this figure breaks down what considerations were important when choosing between VPNs. So the general population respondents considered security, privacy, and cost to be um, important. And this is actually consistent with our other findings that the general population often describes VPN functionality in terms of privacy uh, and security. While students' respondents' most important considerations were cost and security as well, um, but also ease of use. So slightly different, but both groups looked at the speed of VPNs as well. And lastly, here we can see that our participants started to use VPNs around high school and college. And so what are the implications of our findings? The conflated nature of the term VPN is misleading and confusing. VPNs refer to a variety of use cases from improving privacy to gaining access to restricted content, but they also serve different functions as they can be institutional and commercial. And this means that users could benefit from better resources that would help them in better understanding of how VPNs work and implications of VPN data collection. So for example, potential tools um, like a browser extension, could help users understand what data VPNs might collect about them um, and also what data leaks outside of the VPN. Moreover, many users selected VPNs based on cost and at the same time, they were concerned about whether VPNs collected and shared data about them. So this finding suggests that some users might be constrained by cost, uh, ultimately making privacy a luxury good. So we strongly believe that strategies for privacy equity could be further explored. And another interesting route that could be taken in the future studies is actually taking these findings about user attitudes and awareness about VPN practices and looking at 
other privacy enhancing technologies, including uh, private browsing mode on common browsers or Tor, uh, and see whether user attitudes and awareness match or trans translate into those. So to conclude, Students mostly use VPNs to access content and when needed, while general population um, use it more continually and for privacy and security. And our participants from both groups believed that VPNs uh, can collect data and um, they had quite pr pragmatic approach towards VPNs. Um, they chose VPNs based on cost, security and speed, and they um, started to use it um, VPNs around high school and college. So thank you so, so much for listening. Uh, I also would like to thank our shepherd Katrina Crumbles and reviewers for their feedback. Um, there are more very interesting tables, figures and information in our paper. So I highly recommend taking a look at it. Um, if you have any questions, I will be happy to answer them. You can also email me. Um, I will be absolutely thrilled to hear from you. Thank you.